Oh, my goodness. What have you done to yourself? Have you lost some weight? <laughs> Maybe it's a new haircut. I'm not sure. But your skin is glowing. You Do you know fabulous. how I know that? You because look- you're a special person. Yes. And it takes a really special person to find us in this particular area of the podcast. Congratulations. You look gorgeous. You look absolutely gorgeous. What mm-hmm. is it? Did you get some good news recently? <laughs> Why don't Fantastic. you say this to me in the morning? Oh, it's just so vibrant. When you arrive. Welcome to the podcast. You've never been this kind to me. I'm absolutely schnitting you. You are schnitting us. <laughs> uh, we had a little bit of fun with the fact that you told a true story. I told a lie, but it was down to the good people of Adelaide to decide. So what we have discovered as well is that when you have to tell a little porky pie, that sometimes you sort of stumble over your words a little bit because lying's not... As natural to you as it is for some. Oh, oh that's, that's an endearing quality. Yeah, okay. Mm. Well, I'm just not naturally dishonest, am I? It was poor radio, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> uh, Jody's juice was epic as well. Yeah, a uh, bit in the juice today. And um, we spoke about the fact that Olivia Newton John had an amazing tribute over the weekend. Um, also, um, you gave us a bit of a personal story about what happened on the weekend. Did you have or did you not have a lovely Sunday? Okay, so sometimes you have to sacrifice yourself for your children and that's exactly what I did for four hours yesterday. Four hours. For the development of of one of your children's dancing future. Yep. Because as we know, there's a really, really good solid future in dancing. It just, yes. What, is she going to be the next Michael Flatley? (laughs) Is she going to be the next Lord of the Dance? (laughs) Mate. Kids at home going, who the hell is Michael Flatley? <laughs> yes, exactly. One of the absolute most iconic river dancers of all time. Yes, who apparently had to have relations before he went on stage. Anyway, we digress. Is that true? Mm-hmm. Wouldn't surprise me. A bit of a dirty bird, mm-hmm. Michael Flatley. Dirty bird. So they say. Flatters. Hey, the other thing that we're playing as well is this new thing called Guess the Ed, where you've got to guess the Ed Sheeran song that we're playing to score some Ed Sheeran tickets. He's coming uh, in a week's time. Mm. Um, so here you go. Here's a little sneak peek of the song that's coming up. That's all we're going to play. That's it. That's it. That's all we're going to play. That's a good enough heads up because okay. these Ed Sheeran tickets are absolute hen's teeth. Yeah. And I will desperately try not to give them away to someone who gets it wrong. Yeah. Don't do that again, please. <laughs> Really just felt our way through that first one, didn't we? <laughs> it's, it's a learning curve, okay? I just don't know what it is, but there's something about you today, everyone. You look so fantastic. You look lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. Jody Oddy, how was your weekend? Um, it was interesting. And I'm a little bit nervous about what I'm about to reveal next because it might get me into trouble on the home front. But you know what? I'm going to do it. You know what? Just mm. get it out there. Get it out of your chest right now. I will. Mm. I will. Now? Yes. Like, actually now? hmm Okay. So, I got stitched up yesterday pretty badly. So, basically, what happened was I have a little dancer in my household. She's nine years old. She lives to dance. She does, like, uh, 20 classes a week. It's literally my superannuation is going into her dance fund. And so, yesterday... I woke up in the morning. She's like, oh, mummy, you take me to the dance seminar. I'm like, oh, yeah, that was the thing that you vaguely spoke about ages ago that I didn't pay attention to. And she's like, yeah, so we have to be there by 11.30. It goes to about 3.30. And I'm like, okay, cool, I'll drop you off. And she's like, no, 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 you don't get to drop me off. You have to stay. I, I, I went, what? What do you mean I have to stay for four hours? And she's like, yeah, yeah, you got to stay the whole time. And so what I didn't understand at the time, when her dad, and I'm going to say this again, her dad signed her up to the seminar, is that you cannot leave. So once you arrive at 11.30, you have to stay on a beautiful Sunday when there's fringe going on and there's all sorts of amazing things happening in Adelaide. You have to stay in a dance hall, in a dance hall, Andrew Hayes, for four hours and be lectured about how sh- how the girls need to enter the stage, why tights are so important, how many dance competitions they should be in. It was like this real drill down on dance. And I'm like, this is why my superannuation is going into a dance school because I don't, so I don't have to attend these things and I don't have to understand any of it. It's I don't a- want to understand any of it. And so that happened yesterday. It's a good solid move by Greg, isn't it? I don't think he was actually planning this, but what he did was he. Um, 
pleased your daughter mm-hmm. and also freed himself up on a Sunday. And I, I, did he go I, play I, golf I, or no, something? No, I genu- yes, he did. He <laughs> was free to do whatever he wanted. And I genuinely was happy to be there because it made my daughter happy. And it made her happy to look over and see mum was sitting there attentively until, you know, it got to one thirty, and mum was hungry and went to the sushi train. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> And I came back. I came back. That's the whole point. But 13, 24, 10, when did your partner stitch you up? That's what I want to talk about this morning. I'll tell you what. I'm so blessed that Cara will go to all of these little events and just take it like an absolute champion. And she has been a couple of times where um, I've had to go to some of these birthday parties, two years old, three year old birthday parties, and I don't know anyone. No, drop and run. And drop so and run, drop out, and run to, mate. It's just dropping off your two-year-old with a bunch of strangers. Yeah, I think that's, that's kind of frowned <laughs> upon these days. <laughs> okay, I get yeah. that. Two's probably a bit young, yeah. but the older kids, please. Oh, I just want to hear from parents. Drop and runs, okay, isn't it? Isn't it? That's what you need to do. Thirteen, twenty, four, ten. When has your partner stitched you up, Marnie from Adelaide? What happened? I would. I am 16, so it's not related to my partner stitching me up, but it's related to the idea of, is it all right to do drop and run? Yes. I believe that it is as long as you check your info. My dad left me at a yoga class to do a drop and run for an hour, and the yoga class wasn't on. (laughs) (laughs) Classic dad. So that was, uh, when was that, did you say, a long time ago, Marnie? Yeah, a while ago, yeah. So, no mobile phones to say, hey, Dad, you turn, come get me? No, no mobile phone. I had no sense of direction, so I was just stuck there. Yeah, it's oh, a bit different no. back in the day. That's hard. That's hard, Marnie. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Kirsty, Christy, sorry, from Old Granella. Hey. Hi, guys. How are we? Good, good. What happened? Good. Uh, so, I came home from picking up my son from uh, childcare and had a little bit of a rant to my husband about one of the workers and comments she made and he decided to go in the next day and then have a conversation about everything we said privately thinking that he was doing the right thing oh and I had then had to walk back in there with my tail between my legs pretending like I actually never said anything at all oh my god oh. how can I just don't understand I have to see them every day and he was like oh, I thought I was doing the right thing having a conversation with her I was a classic man I'm trying to fix it I just want to fix it well you dug the hole yeah. deeper there though yeah, I couldn't believe it. I went, how could you ever say that to her? That was just me ranting. Very <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, thank you very much, guys, for getting involved this morning. Tickets to see Topic for Nova's Red Room. Don't forget the Gluttony in Roma Park, home of the biggest shows. This fringe tickets from gluttony.net.au. Um, look, Greg already has got some explaining to do. I think you say that much. As always. And I know you do your damn best to defend my husband, but on this occasion, you got nothing. <laughs> he, makes it, he makes it tough sometimes. <laughs> he really does. He makes it really tricky. Hey, um, here's the other thing as well. We've just got so many tickets uh, coming out of us this morning. Uh, Ross Noble, a double pass to Jibber Jabber Jamboree at Gluttony. If you've got the code word from the podcast oh, yes. on Friday, mm-hmm. then give us a call. Yeah. 13 24 10. Jibber Jabber Jamboree. Mm, Say a, that three times. It's a catchy little title, isn't mm-hmm. it? All right, Cod. Uh, Code word pod, <laughs> podcast code word get it through thirteen twenty four ten Nova. Well done. Book for holiday you this summer because Aussies act a little different on holiday. More of daring, relax, and sometimes a bit more fancy. And what if has all kinds of accommodation to suit your style. Book your next getaway on the What If app. What if it's Aussie for travel? The biggest breaking story this town has ever seen this is huge. I just can't find you this is so juicy. Jody's juice. Oh my goodness, Harry Styles is owning Australia at the moment. So the British singer kicked off his Love on Tour concerts down under last week by doing an honorary shoey. Can you remember that? (sighs) Shoeys are still a thing? Yeah. In Perth in front of 30,000 screaming fans. Now he was grooving across the stage at Melbourne's Marvel Stadium wearing a $7 bunning straw hat. So someone from the crowd has hoied it at him, like just thrown it, and he's like seamlessly just grabbed it, put put it on his head. Um, and Bunnings has jumped on board, has rebranded it, the Harry Styles hat, and now it's sold out. <laughs> Come on. What, I, I, you'd love to test it as well. What could you possibly get Harry Styles to endorse yes. and it would be successful? Get, n- anything. Like, think of the most, what is the most unsellable item on the planet? Yeah. Well, and think- if you got Harry on board, would it sell? You have a think about that. <laughs> he also sang an Australian cult classic. Have a listen. Oh. 
Just imagine the last time you were at a wedding yeah, and you started um, singing along to horses and just how much it went off at that particular wedding. I know. Imagine Harry Styles doing it. Oh, my God. Oh, what about control. the last race day that you went to and they've wheeled out good old, who sings it? <laughs> Daryl Braithwaite, <laughs> who was in the crowd too. Oh, yes, he was. Yes. Yeah, extraordinary. Um, now, Olivia Newton-John's memorial was yesterday. It was pretty heartfelt and beautiful. There were a long list of tributes from Dolly Parton, Elton John, Pink, Sir Barry Gibb, um, Mariah Carey, but Delta Goodrum did an amazing tribute. I better shave my If anyone can do it justice and take it to the next level, yeah. it's Delta. Yeah. I'm really reticent to do this because I know you're going to cane me, but I did meet her once. I was lucky enough to... All right, I won't talk about it. I didn't say anything. I won't. Hey, no, you didn't say. You hey, didn't have to say anything. Just, you just rolled your eyes. This is not a visual medium, okay? <laughs> just rolled your eyes at me. I didn't roll my eyes. I took a deep breath okay. to get ready to say, just, of I, course you did. Okay. Of I'm course on, did. The only reason I'm saying it is because she was as lovely in person as you ever thought, ever imagined she would be. She was yep. so nice. She was okay. really cool. That's good. <sighs> so she's one of your good friends. She was one of your good friends. That's what you're trying to say. I've met Delta, by the way. Oh, good for you. <laughs> oh, come on. I mean, you've only met Delta. <laughs> me jumping this conversation. <laughs> you've only met Delta because she was like the sister of someone you probably played football with at Central. Yeah, yes? with, with uh, Trent Goodall. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So it's okay for you. It's all right for you, isn't it? I just don't go around screaming it from the rooftops, that's all. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, we get it. You've interviewed a whole heap of famous people. That's fine. I got to speak to Delta once upon a time, though. I'll take that. That's my claim to fame. <laughs> I actually hate you. I genuinely hate you this morning. <laughs> you were so mean to me. I can't say anything. Anyway, have I'm you met do- Cody Simpson? <laughs> yes, I have. Have you actually? Yes. Oh. So screw you. This is outrageous. <laughs> Have you actually interviewed... So, everyone that we're speaking about this morning, have you interviewed Harry Styles? <laughs> no, no. No, I haven't. Oh. No, I haven't. It's a matter of time, though, Don't isn't be it? jealous, mate. <laughs> this is the whole thing that's coming out in you right now. You're so jealous. Oh, I'd love to meet Cody Simpson. What was he like? <laughs> anyway, uh, Cody Simpson and his star-studded team have broken the record for the fastest ever swim for a team of four at the South 32 Rottnest Channel Swim. So, it's 19.7 Ks, four of them. And they smashed it. So Simpson, along with Olympic gold medalist Mac Horton, fellow pro swimmers Bowen Goff and Josh Edward Smith, completed an elite quartet of stars and they lived up to their mammoth billing. They got home in uh, three hours, 33 minutes and 49 seconds. There you mm. go. All that to meet a quokka. <laughs> <laughs> All that work just to meet a quokka. At Rottnest Island. At Rottnest Island. Everyone goes, oh, look, they're smiling at me. I don't think the quokkas have a choice. I think that's their natural face. Is it? Mm. Yeah. So there you go. Is That's your is is your natural face just jealous <laughs> the whole time? <laughs> I've met a quaker. That's my claim to fame. Are you telling me you built a time machine? Hazy's on this Daisy. Welcome to Monday. How was your weekend? It was good. Good stuff. Successful. Thanks. Yeah, good stuff. Let's take a little trip down memory lane. The twenty seventh of February. Let's go back to eighteen twenty seven. First Mardi Gras was celebrated in New Orleans. I've been to a couple of Mardi Gras in Sydney. Oh. Just such a fun weekend, so much culture. Is it amazing? I'd love to go. Yeah, do it. It's something you should tick off on your bucket list. In saying that, the vibes of the first one back in 1827, I'm not sure about it. I feel a little different to now. <laughs> a like, little bit different, do you reckon? I, I feel like people might have been a little more reserved about things yeah. back then, do you reckon? Yes. Just a little. <laughs> For risk of being burned at the stake. Yeah, just a little. Mm. When he could have got burned to the ground if he showed a little bit of uh, too much flesh on the ankle. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, 1974, People magazine begins sales. My brain's telling me Picture magazine, but Picture and People magazine, very, very different, I'm assuming. One's gossip. The other one is something you'd find in your dad's bottom drawer. And what's the difference? <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> 
1977, ABBA arrived in and commenced their first and only tour of Australia. I think that's ABBA the band and not Bruce Abernethy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. No. If Bruce Abernethy did a tour of Australia, I'd go see him. I'd follow him around. So ABBA, their first concerts in Australia took place at the City Showground, where 20,000 fans battled with a violent rainstorm despite the circumstances. The show went on. Right. Uh, did the band ABBA like a brandy as well? It did. <laughs> 1992, Tiger Woods, aged 16, became the youngest PGA golfer in 35 years. I'm not going to out-ball strike you to death. I'm not going to out-putt you to death. But there's no reason why I can't out-think you. 16? Yes. That's insane. Um, fun fact, Tiger's full name is Eldrick Woods. Is it? Eldrick is his first name. That's a bit less cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's not as cool as Tiger, is no. it? So Tiger's not actually on the birth certificate. No, is his, was his mum a tiger mum? Is that why? You know how they call them tiger mums when they ride their kids real hard? No, I think it was, she was actually a tiger. Like, <laughs> rawr. <laughs> What are you up to, Mr. Woods? 2018, Barbara Streisand reveals she has cloned her dog twice. So that's a thing. I didn't know you could clone animals, like, oh. genuinely. Oh. Can you? I, apparently you could. Barbara did it. <laughs> what? We must get Barbara on the line. <laughs> She's still with us. Yes. Yes. Yeah. This is not dead or alive, mate. Okay. <laughs> Barbara uh, Streisand no. is very much alive. No, she's dead. She's alive. Ah, oh, she's alive. You win. Coffee's on me. <laughs> uh, and then I want song on February 27th in 2004 was Yeah, Yeah by Usher <laughs> featuring Little John and Ludacris. Ludacris. Okay. 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 Knitting me two stories, one truth, one lie. If you can correctly identify what's going on, we'll give you a one hundred dollar voucher to Schnitt House. Yeah. Uh, Do you want to go first? Um, I can if you like. Yep. Go you on. You usually then. go first, so why don't I go first? Okay. Okay. So um, a, a few years ago, I actually interviewed Olivia Newton-John. <laughs> no, I know that was you. <laughs> That's not part of it. You're not funny. Oh, didn't your vibe change? You're not funny. <laughs> Okay. Actually, I interviewed Nat. I haven't really interviewed anyone. Okay, here's my story, and I stand by. It. So at my um, at my school, we did cadets. So basically, it's like mini military, on you know whatever it is. I don't know how to explain or more so. So it's about cadets. discipline. It's about discipline. All and the you learnt nothing. <laughs> I learnt nothing. I was a rebel at the back. Oh. Um, you know, flicking but uh, paper. Big, little bits of paper mache and spinning them through the straw. Oh, that was so me. funny. How yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, anyway, so long story short, we were in, because I went to school in Sydney, we were in Penrith on a bit of a day trip and I thought it would be really cool to go ahead of the group. Yep. And I got lost and then they couldn't find me and then for whatever reason, no one knew that I was missing <laughs> and the entire school went back to school, which was about an hour away and I was lost in the woods of Penrith for a good six or seven hours before I finally came into some suburbia. Okay. And I had to speak to a grandma. That is ludicrous, featuring Usher. Ludicrous. <laughs> featuring Usher. Before I spoke to a grandma who put me in touch with some people from the school and they had to come out and pick me up. They completely forgot me. I was almost stranded in the woods by myself as a 15-year-old boy. <laughs> that is so obscene. That is so ridiculous. Okay. Yeah. Right. Are you joking about that? I'm not joking. Well, that's that's part of the game, so I'm not going to reveal that right away, am I? Okay. All right. Well, if you want to talk truth or lies, I interviewed Ludacris. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. Well, what was he like then? He was lovely. Yeah? He was so nice. What would you talk about? Um, Stuff. Like what sort of no, stuff? No, it was um, one of those junkets where they fly you to Sydney and then you get to sit down to a one-on-one -on -one for the radio and he was, like, he was interesting, mm. like, a little bit different and hard to crack. You know, like, some of those interviews where you sit down and you're like, ooh, trying to, like, you've got eight minutes, exactly eight minutes to make a, a connection. Okay. And, yeah. So, you, you, so, what were some of the questions? <laughs> what were some of the questions? No, like, I, I, like just general discussion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you got eight minutes with Ludacris. First question, what have you got for him? H how are you? No. Is that, is that what we're talking about? No, I did. What did you have like, for Brecky? I, I definitely did research. Mm. Yeah. And he's a nice guy? Yeah, he was lovely. Okay. Yeah. Strange. Does he have a reputation for being a nice guy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Yep. Did you ask him about his collaboration with Justin Bieber? Oh, my God. Don't drill down, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Do not drill down. Right. 
Um, somebody's selling a porky pie and somebody is telling the truth. Who is it? Hundred dollar mm. Schnitthaus voucher up for grabs. You went missing in the woods yes. for eight hours. Eight hours. I nearly had to Come sleep on. in the woods in Penrith before I uh, stumbled upon a grandma's house and I was rescued by my school. And at the time as well, just on that, at the time, I was like, I'm going to get so much trouble from the school. But I didn't, and mm. now I realise they were like, oh my God, we left a kid behind in the woods. <laughs> we could get in so much trouble. Okay. All right. We're Are not you schnitting you. me? Schnitthaus Australia serves the best schnitzels made fresh daily with authentic Golden Classic or celiac friendly breadcrumbs, Hilton Golden Grove and O'Halloran Hill. We will take your calls next with a $100 Schnitthaus voucher up for grabs. This. <laughs> Are you schnitting me? Two true... Ooh, one truth, one lie, two stories. Winner, if you can correctly identify, gets a $100 Schnitthaus voucher. And yours is recap. completely absurd. It's... I mean, it, it's so absurd, it just might be true. Ooh. So we went on a bit of a, a field trip uh, as part of a cadet course at my school back in the day. Uh, and I charged ahead of my group. I don't know why I thought it would be funny to get back to the bus first, but I got lost. Yeah. Ended up being in the woods in Penrith. For about seven or eight hours, and I ended up stumbling into Penrith, screaming, Go Panthers! I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I stumbled upon a grandma's house, and she put me in touch with the school, and they had to come out and pick me up. I don't know if it's true or not, but it's kind of symbolic of your life, just wandering around lost in the woods, <laughs> that, not knowing where you're going. Yeah, that bit makes sense, doesn't it? It does. So that's very believable. Yep. Um, as for you... You reckon you interviewed Ludacris? Yes. And they flew you what to Sydney or Melbourne? Sydney. Sydney. Yep. You had eight minutes. Yep. To ask him your best Ludacris questions. Yeah. And all his responses were yeah, yeah. <laughs> even though that's Little John. <laughs> Let's go to Sarah from Mount Barker. Hi, Sarah. Good day. How you doing, guys? We're great, thanks. How are you? I'm not bad, thank you. Okay. Who's schnitting you? Okay, I think the interview of Ludacris is the fib. Right. Mm. It's interesting. It's very interesting, isn't it? I think we're just getting a little bit too much uh, chuckling as you tell the story. Yeah. And a little bit of, I don't know, I just don't trust the tone of the answers. And I think the cadet story is almost so ridiculous that you want to believe it. (laughs) (laughs) There's almost too much detail. But Sarah, <laughs> yeah. okay, let me turn this back on you. If you had to ask Ludacris <laughs> a question, what would you ask him, for goodness sake? Oh, goodness. Um, what's your favourite thing about Australia? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's like, not bad. Yeah. That's yeah, not that's bad. Good. Okay. Sarah? Yeah. yeah. I'm so pleased for you because you've got a hundred dollars to spend. Oh my goodness! <laughs> At the Schnitt House. Thank you so much. I never <laughs> interviewed Ludacris, and as if they'd fly me to Sydney to interview Ludacris, and I cannot believe that you got lost in the woods for like seven hours. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's insane. <laughs> it's actually, uh, it's really quite outrageous. Um, the thing about it is, which is actually quite endearing. You're not good at lying, eh? No, I'm horrible. <laughs> I'm terrible. Sarah, thanks for picking me up. Absolutely no worries. Thanks, guys. <laughs> good on you, Tom. Very good stuff. We're not schnitting you. Schnitthaus Australia serves the best schnitzels made fresh daily with authentic golden classical celiac friendly breadcrumbs, Hilton Golden Grove, and O'Halloran Hill. Hit the Ed Sheeran song. It's the wrong lyric, but can you guess the end? And you and three besties are off to Ed Sheeran VIP style. Yes, we're bit doing, of fun. We're doing this for the first time. So we're, we're all this. learning along with me because I don't know what's about to happen. <laughs> all I know is I saw you and a guitar on Friday. Yes. Doing some singing. Just um, trying to cover some Ed Sheeran songs. Yes. So what we're doing is uh, it'll be, I mean, every single Ed Sheeran song is pretty iconic, isn't it? It's totally true. And sometimes you don't even need the lyrics to be able to identify the song. Yeah. So we thought, why don't we just mash it up with some absolutely outrageously random lyrics? I know then. For example, I mean, maybe it's, you know, um, the description of a, <laughs> a delicious Nutri-Grain bra. Oh, okay. Mixed together with an Ed Sheeran song. All right. Can you work out what Ed Sheeran song this is? Bar made with mini bolts. Corner, sweet and rice, and a layer of chalk. Oh. That's good. <laughs> I liked it. 
Are you hankering for a neutral grain now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me neither. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Well, let's go to Michelle, Michelle from, from Lockleys. <laughs> Castle on the hill, castle on the hill. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Wow. Michelle, you've come in aggressively hot. (laughs) (laughs) And you're still, you're still, you're still far too hot. Okay, so we just need to, we just need to keep some composure. Okay, so can you correctly identify (laughs) the Ed Sheeran song? And really think, you know, I'll just play the first bit again for you really, really quickly, okay? Just really stop and think about this, okay? Okay. Yes. That, that's all I'm going to get you. What's your answer? Castle on the Hill. No. Joan, what's wrong with you? Oh, no, what is wrong with you? <laughs> Press the right button, please. That's so mean. Michelle, you're going to add cheering. No. Michelle got it wrong. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> um, let's go to uh, Sarah from Windsor Gardens. I thought Hello. Was, I thought that was right. <laughs> Is it not right? Sarah, are you there? Yes, I Okay. Am. Now, you heard the previous guess. Yes. Have you got an answer for us? Is it the A thing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh I've just worked out you were the only one in the room that realised that Michelle got it wrong. <laughs> Michelle, oh no. But Sarah just swooped in, very Stephen Bradbury-like, and picked up these tickets. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Oh, geez, that was a real heart-in-the-mouth type it's setup there, wasn't it? A real adventure. Mm. Mm. You almost just given away your <laughs> tickets. For goodness sake. Sorry. <laughs> hey, well done, Sarah. Congratulations. You're going to have the best time. Thank you. Nova welcomes Ed Sheeran back to Adelaide next Tuesday for his mathematics tour. Kevin on Jody and Hayes to win your way there. We're playing Guess the Ed all week. We got there in the end. I just really got caught up in Michelle's enthusiasm. That's all. You get a car. You get a car. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, a quick one. Congratulations to Paddy from Enfield who texts through on 0400919919. He correctly guessed the code word and that is fringe. Yes. via the podcast, yes. so he's off to see Ross Noble. Jibber jabber jamboree at Gluttony. Just a quick one. If you could let me know when the mics are on, that'd be great. So our okay. off-air conversation doesn't translate yeah. to on-air. It's fine. Okay. It's I, no big cause, deal. Because it's your first time doing this. So I thought, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's on me. It's on me. It is on you. <laughs> no, he's just talking about you've got a lot on I, at Channel 7 today. Producer Sean, um, can you go burp Jody as well? Because... Uh, <laughs> Great. Change my nappy. Thanks a lot. Change, change the nappy. Too. And if you've got you're a, not, you're not going to do that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all good. If you've got a dummy too, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, I've got two. This just got weird. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's been fun this morning. We played our first edition of Guess the Ed. Mm. <laughs> you, you tried to give away the tickets to the wrong caller, but that's okay. We'll play again tomorrow. We're doing this all week. She was so excited. I thought she got it right. <laughs> like, she was convinced she got it right. So it just kind of, yeah, it, it rubbed off on me. I was like, yes, yes. well done. No, oh, incorrect. We'll <laughs> do it all again tomorrow for Guess Yet. And Judge Jody returns. Oh, yes. Big one tomorrow. Mm. So this is bridesmaid territory, which can get very, very precarious. Like, it's essentially when you choose a bridesmaid, it's like you saying, you're my best friend and you're my best friend. And then if you get left out, you're like, ooh, okay, maybe I'm not that close. And what we will discuss tomorrow as well is that things have drastically changed. Mm. So I've been married for approximately six years. Jeez, that better be right. I'm getting in a lot of trouble Mm. just in terms of who pays for what and what you're supposed to cover or get covered in terms of the bride and the groom. Yeah, precarious. Mm. It's all precarious. Interesting stuff. Mm. Uh, More Red Room invites to give away as well. Yes. It's all happening. Guess the Ed's back tomorrow and I'll hopefully try and give away the tickets to the person who actually gets it right. Yeah, that'll be nice. Let's try that (laughs) just for something different. All right, stick around. DC's going to take you through your workday with the next chance to get on the standby list for Nova's first class and 50K. Enjoy your Monday. We'll catch you tomorrow. Goodbye. See you, mate.